welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to explore Sashiko in Inkscape and Inkstitch. So let's get to it. So dad, what is Sashiko if I'm pronouncing it right? Well, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right either, but I believe Sashiko is a Japanese style of hand embroidery that is basically a repetitive pattern. So with this, you can get a very cool pattern that is incorporated into an extension into Inkscape that you can then use to embroider out a design on Ink Stitch. So it's really cool where you can just have a nice pattern that could be used for quilting or it could be used as a knockdown stitch. That is something just completely different than what you normally would have as a knockdown stitch. So um, I'm interested to try it out, but we're going to show you how to download it, install it, and use it, and we'll even do a little project. So we're at InkStitch's website, which is inkstitch.org, and we're just going to go ahead and download the extension. Yeah, in order to do that, you can just use this magnifying glass, which is a search button, and type in Sashiko, and you can see it's the top link here. And when you click it, it will bring you to what it is and give you a good explanation of how to install. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and go to the Inkscape extension here. And then we're gonna go to this link here to download the two files necessary to import into our user extensions. And that's right here, sashiko.inx and sashiko.py. So we're going to click on it and we're gonna download, allow. Now that we have the two files downloaded, you can see them here in our download folder. And these are the two files that we need to import into our user extension, as you can see here in the installation instructions. So what we need to do is we need to open up Inkscape and we're gonna to go to preferences, system, and then under system info, we're going to the user extension folder and we're going to click open. And from here, you can see the only other user extension that we have put into Inkscape is Inkstitch. So this is how we know we're in the right folder. And from here, we're going to go ahead and open up our download folder and bring over our two documents right there. So now it's in our user extension folder, those two files. Now what we need to do is we need to close Inkscape and reopen it. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up our template. So now from here, we can go to extensions, render, and Sashiko. And this is gonna give us a little pop-up settings menu where we can decide the different settings that we can get and different types of Sashiko stitches that we want out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Live Preview so we can view our design before we hit Apply, so we can make some changes if necessary. But you can see there's a ton of different unique patterns that you could put on your embroidery design. I like that one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shrink this up a bit, fit in our page. So from here, what we need to do is convert this into a dashed line stroke so that we can make a bean stitch out of it. So to do that, we're gonna go and click on our stroke style and change this to a dashed line. And that's gonna convert this over to a dashed line. And now what we can do is we can go to params to set up our bean stitch. So go to bean stitch, params, so it looks like there's gonna be a lot of jump stitches there and that's, I guess, okay. But what we wanna do is uh, set our repeats. Uh, so we already are, we are have it set for one, so it's gonna do like two stitches for a bean stitch. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna hit apply and quit. We can also, let's see, stitch. Our wrap running stitch. Not sure that's gonna work for us, but we'll go ahead and hit that apply. All right, so let's see what this looks like in the simulator. By auto routing it, it got rid of a lot of those jump stitches. So click on this little realistic view. Yeah, that's gonna look really nice. What do you think? Yeah. 
Okay, so this is really just the start of any, you know, quilt project or whatever, because you can put anything you want on top of this. And after this stitches out, cut any jump stitches that you need, and then you could put a layer of whatever other design you want to put there. This is just a really cool background pattern that you can add to any fabric. It also could be like the main design too, because it is really cool. It is. We could make this fill up the entire page and that could be like a quilt square. Yeah, it could also be maybe like a coaster design. There's a bunch of different things you could do with it. Absolutely. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually stitch this out on some linen and see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm excited to see what results we get. So these are the results we came up with, and there's many more different patterns you can do. Yeah, there's many cool ways you can incorporate this into your project. If you wanted to repurpose denim jeans and turn it into like a denim bag or something, that would look really cool there. Obviously a quilt, which you've already mentioned, or just incorporate it as a background as part of your design as a knockdown stitch. I think all would be really good uses of this particular style and it's super easy to use. I think they did a good job of making it very user friendly as just an extension. One more thing I think we could do for this particular design is if we wanted to, I don't know, change the thread color of certain elements of this particular design, just to get it to pop even more, we could do that because the way it imports or renders it's individual shapes. So you could select those individual shapes, turn them a different color, and all of a sudden you have different colored sashiko design. One key takeaway out of this that we learned is, as you saw when we first went to the params and we saw a bunch of different kinds of jump stitches all around the project, after doing the auto routing the stitch makes it so that we didn't have to trim any jump stitches. It just kind of jumped around on the sewing machine so that it didn't have to do a bunch of jump stitches. So yeah. definitely auto route. Which is nice because whenever we've used trim commands, it never really works, but this worked. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.